Nikki Giovanni famously said, Margaret Walker is the most famous person that, that nobody knows. Style, in my estimation, is nothing more than the impression of the personality on the piece of writing. Style is a very individual matter. It is absolutely personal. No matter whether you call it a simple style or a sublime style, style is, is absolutely individual. Uh, my style is me. It's my voice. It's the way I express myself. I write a certain way because I am me. And, and no matter how you would de de describe that style or define it, style is the personality impressed on the piece of writing. Hey guys, so welcome back to Lex Reads. So in today's video, we are actually doing a reading vlog and I'm so excited about this reading vlog because first of all, it's a book that's on my TBR list. The book is Jubilee by Margaret Walker. I told you guys in my um, updated TBR video that I started marking um, books when I was going to read them for the month. So I wanted to pick um this for october because october is a longer month and just in case if i didn't finish it and i wanted to have like the whole month to dedicate it to if i needed to but good thing is i didn't have to have the whole month because this book was so so good um this is my first time reading anything margaret walker i actually do like to read slave narratives also historical fiction i know this is so it's a little bit of historical fiction um so this is kind of hard to categorize because it says on the blurb, New York Times says, one of the most memorable women of contemporary fiction. But I do know that Vyrie Brown, who is the main protagonist in the story, is actually Margaret Walker's great grandmother. And her grandmother, when she was like younger, would always tell her stories of, you know, like her people. And also, I'm going to link down below. I watched a really good interview with um, Tari Jones and talking about Margaret Walker and how, you know, people don't really know her. For example, I did not know that Margaret Walker was a poet. I just thought she was just like, you know, a straight novelist. I know this is her only book that she wrote, but I did not know that she was a poet, which hence why this book was so good and written well. <laughs> it was fantastic. It was so excited when I came across that um, interview because it gave really good insights on Margaret Walker. Um, the lady that Tari Jones is interviewing, I think she did a biography about her. Um, I still sound a little bit, throughout the video you're going to see, I still sound a little bit hoarse, um, especially in the morning time. It's morning time right now. I'm like a little bit hoarse, clearly, because I haven't been talking for hours and then it gets a little bit better. But y'all know these past two, two, almost three weeks have been rough for me. I had laryngitis, but, but I'm slowly getting past it. So thank the Lord. Yeah, guys, I just wanted to introduce the vlog. And I was, it was, I was able to be trash a lot of my undergrad, but it was So I got the book. This is what it is. I'll show you guys more in detail when I get home, but this is what I wanted. So you guys, I just came back from the store. I went to, well, first I went to go get my eyebrows done. Had to get them waxed. Um, then I went to Barnes & Noble because I saw on Instagram yesterday, um, Jacqueline Woodson. Do you guys know Jacqueline Woodson? She is like... Oh my goodness, amazing. She primarily writes like YA, middle grade. I mean like middle grade, but she can do middle grade. She can do YA, children's book, and adult books. And I've read, um, you know what, let me show you my collection of hers. This is my collection. As you can see, I am a huge fan. Now, I know she's really known for this book, um, Brown Girl dreaming let's put her on the map and i haven't read it i have not read it at all and this book came out oh first of all i got it in 2019 but this book came out in 2014 but of 
her books that I have read, I think I've read all of these, yeah. Now, I remember I first started off with this. It's if, um, if You Come Softly, and I know that is actually a poem by... What's her name? Audrey Lord. But this is a retelling of uh, Romeo and Juliet. And the boy is black and the girl is Jewish, I believe. And you already know, you know, what happens to Romeo and Juliet. But it's a twist because instead of the, well, they both die, don't they? Yeah. Well, the boy dies. And then she had a sequel to this, which is this behind you. I remember reading these in a day. They were so good. And then the last book I read by her was Red at the Bone. Now, this is a adult book. And this actually introduced me to the Tulsa, um, Tulsa uh, race riots that happened in the 1920s, I believe. And this was so good. This is about a young girl. Um, her family, like, was involved in that back in the day. And the young girl gets pregnant when she's in high school and she doesn't really know what well she knows that she doesn't not want to have the baby but she wants to go to college and you know do all that but this focuses on the a teen dad in a different light okay because you know a lot of times they go you know the girl has a whole responsibility this one the dad, he stepped up as he should, but he really stepped up, okay? But this was so good. Oh my goodness, this is so good. I also read this in one day. I actually need to revisit this because I think the next time I will read this, I would want to um, tap it. And then this is another book that is um, adult. And it's um, another Brooklyn. This is about four young girls, I believe. Yeah, four young girls in the 70s in Brooklyn and you just see their lives, you know, um, go on. And you just see their lives and how they navigate their, you know, uh, personal and professional lives. Really, really good. And then, yeah, these are these are all YA, YA I believe, or middle grade. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's YA because it says young readers. This is Feathers and then this is Locomotion. Now, you know, I don't, don't think I've read this one. Um, but... I say all that to say I want to show you guys my collection because this book just came out like last week. First of all, get into this cover. So pretty. And this is about a young girl named Sage. She is in Brooklyn. She is raised in Brooklyn. And her neighborhood, they call it the match box because like basically all the houses are burnt down. And she's kind of like a tomboy. And she plays, you know, hoops with the boys. But then she wants to be she wants to be in a circle of she wants to be in this like circle of like these girls but it looks like you know because she is a town boy but a young boy i believe comes to the neighborhood and they like really hit it off and like he understands her and she understands him so i i don't know for some reason like I, i've always liked jack lewis and clearly but i just gravitated towards this book when i saw it and i saw the synopsis i'm like i just wanted to get it now and this book is only 178 pages oh this is a book i could read it a day you know how i do my read a book in a day uh so yeah i got that and then i went to a you guys know i've been i told you guys that store um totem books in flint michigan they do records you know they have records um books clothes everything so of course i have to get a record because it's not a month without me getting a record and i got a record in two books but let me just show you the record i got which i'm about to play it in a minute tina marie and this is irons in the fire and only paid five dollars for this i wish they had our first album I remember saying that and didn't get it and I really wish I've got it because Behind the Groove, that's like, I think that's what, that was our first single and it is fire, okay? But yeah, I'm excited to listen to this. And I was looking at the album, girl, Tina, she wrote and produced this album and then there was another album she wrote and produced. So she was a fantastic writer. I got to give it to her and producer. 
Then I got two books. I got, finally, I was like, you know what, let me just bite the bullet. Every time I go there, I see it and I don't get it. It's Charles, Chest Charles Chestnut, The House Behind the uh, Cedar. And I know this is about a young, um, this is, this, it's, it, oh, it says finest novel, I was going to say first. This is about a young mulatto girl that passes for white and it's post antebellum um, South. So I really want to get into that. I like, you know, I like books about passing. Now, this font is horrible. Who is so little? Look how little that is. <clears throat> Girl. But I am, I really want to get this, so. And then I got um, Lola Leroy by Lola Leroy by Frances um, Harper. Got that, and then <coughs> what else did I get? Oh, I just got some laminating paper um, because you guys know I have an Etsy shop and I do uh, custom um, bookmarks, and I have an order for about 10 <laughs> bookmarks. Um, it's my prints on a... And I'm also going to restock. I think I'm going to do um, a Beyonce, the Renaissance, like when she's on the horse or whatever. So be on the lookout for that. I got more into this. I'm going to talk about it later because I need to kind of clean up a little bit. Mistress of the House cannot stand her, which is like a lot of the slave novels and like narratives. A lot of time the Mistress of the House is a mess and it's like rare when you like them. I am like, when I was reading it, I was going back in my mind, I'm like, out of all the slave narratives that I've read, I don't think I've liked any of the mistress of the house. They have all just been a mess. And then, you know, she can't stand Viry because <clears throat> obviously Viry is a product of the master and she looks just like him and she looks like their daughter, Lily. I mean, very looks white, basically. People have said, you know, your daughter looks like her and she just hates that. But girl, <sighs> When she sold Aunt Sally, I was done. But I want to talk more about it because I want to read some passages for you guys. Um, but yeah, loving it so far. I'm on page 106. That is a lot for me. I want to try to finish this or get, if I can't finish it this weekend, at least get a, a good amount, you know, a big dip. Okay, in. guys, so it is later, like in the night and I'm getting ready to take a bath. But I wanted to update you guys on um my reading for jubilee clearly and so far love it i'm so excited that i finally have a book where i think i said it before where i can like highlight and annotate and write in it because i just wanted a book where i could do that for some reason and i thought i was going to be able to do that in um what is it called invisible man by uh richard uh, invisible man by ralph ellison but that was a bust for me which i'm gonna give that a try again but it's gonna be a while but um lovingness i mean i love slave narratives but who is these white people in here are getting on my nerves oh my gosh okay so first of all big missy which is the mistress of the house that woman is the devil <laughs> um so clearly she can't stand viry because viry is a product of you know her husband and an enslaved woman and Viri looks exactly like uh and Viri looks exactly like Master John and um their daughter uh Lillian but like she literally tortures that girl she gets like when she moves in the house she's like six seven years old and she like breaks a dish and instead of like beating her she literally like hangs her in a closet and her like yeah, she literally like hangs her in a closet and this so this is a child and the girl passes out and then um you know master comes in and was like don't you ever do that again and da 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 because it looked like he really do like her but I think he likes Viri because he liked Viri's mama, okay? Um and she knows that and she like hates that. But because of that <coughs> she ends up leaving um she ends up moving in with she still works at the big house but she ends up um moving in the cabin with um aunt sally which becomes like a surrogate mother to her 
she is a cook she's been at the plantation ever since like master jacobs was a little boy but i love this scene too um clearly the missus she counts everything that comes in and out the kitchen food and all that of course you know she's not giving it to any of the slaves or whatever so they kind of have to fend for themselves but and sally is real clever Vera was so devoted to Aunt Sally, she would never have told anyone how often she saw her steal great, panful, great panfuls of white folks grub and how many pockets she had in her skirts, her bosoms where she had biscuits and cakes and pies, even though Big Missy had threatened more than once to have Aunt Sally swung up and given a good beating if she ever caught her stealing. Once safe in the cabin, they would fill their stomachs full of good food, and tattling over the thoughts of how many different kinds of fits Big Missy would have if she knew how she had been outsmarting. She'll die an unnatural death if she'd known I'm eating her biscuits. <laughs> I love that. I love Aunt Sally. But then later on, they have a um, a dinner party. And one, some of the, um, and they have a dinner party and the, one of the guests tells him he says um by the way i've heard by the way i heard that one of the lower courts just this past week about two slave cooks had been arrested for poisoning three and poisoning three of their master's families big missy she criticizes um aunt sally's food saying that the um the patties were too salty and she's like you know she's out of like her game tonight and i don't know what's going on maybe you need to sell her and granted she has been there ever since he was a little boy right and he's thinking about what he heard from his guests about you know them um you know about the slaves poisoning and killing their masters and stuff like that the reason why she was off her game that night is grims who is the um what is it like slave catcher or whatever he end up killing old grandpa tom and we find that old grandpa tom was um related to aunt sally and reason why he beats him to death this is an old man because <clears throat> master john is away and grims asked for a horse and um grandpa tom is doing his job because master john like don't let nobody use my horse you know this these are my good horses da da da, da. so he like, I can't let you do that. And Grim's like, give me the horse and da-da-da. He like, no. So he beat the man to death and it's an old man. And I mean, girl, the way that they describe it is horrible. So she is grieving him. Do you know, because of that, he listened to his wife and she, and they end up selling her. And it is so sad. Oh my goodness, it's so sad because my right now Vera is about 15 years old and that's like her mom and they both like work in the kitchen and she has taught her everything she knows and things like that but eventually they hire some cooks and it don't go well and you know master john like i can't believe i ain't let you talk me into you know getting rid of her and they sell her to the highest bidder which is like horrible and um She's like, well, and, you know, he, he all ticked off. And he's like, I've known her since I was a little boy. And, you know, nobody can cook like her. But then we discover that Vary cooks exactly like Aunt Sally because she watched and emulated everything. So she becomes the cook. Now she's come into, like, her womanhood and things like that. But I also want to share with you guys the way that she looks. Her milky white face she, with her sandy hair roped high on her head. Her cold bluish gray eyes looked out without emotion. Her mouth was tight and a straight heart line. First of all, I thought you was a young missus. You look just like her. He's talking about um, Lillian, which is basically her sister. She said, I'm a slave, all right, snap uh, Viri. So she's talking to Randall, Randall Ware. Um, he is a free black man and she's like brought him food or whatever because he's like, working on their plantation and she t and basically he like really likes her and Vyrie she like 
the you know like they described it she has like no emotion in her eyes and she just wants her freedom right so he's like well you know i'm a free black man i can maybe help you get your freedom but you would have to marry me and she kind of you know a little cold or whatever um but she's like well hmm that might be a possibility but she learns that master john doesn't want to get rid of her because of her cooking and <laughs> excuse me it's going to be kind of hard to try to i guess sell her um because if they go because if he marries her then he can buy her like freedom and she can be free i am really liking this a lot i am like you know tabbing highlighting it and i am just excited to see where it's going to go i was looking on wikipedia because i was trying to see like all the characters names but i had to kind of like stop myself because you know it had like the person's name and like what happened to him so it's like i don't want to know um but yeah i'm going to get in the bathtub and read a little bit more i tend to read a lot in the bathtub it's really weird but yeah right, guys real quick i literally just got out the bathtub and i was reading obviously jubilee okay so i didn't know <coughs> excuse me lucy who is she's one of the um house servants and i just realized she was virie's older half sister by virie's mom's slave husband so she was like fully uh black but girl she got in some mess you hear me she with with big uh missy of course so big missy has this like parrot that if you curse it like said if you curse it'll like say something or make noises knowing that you said like a bad word or whatever so they um ask her one of the servants say oh big uh you know missus wants you 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 know da 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 da, da. and she say Oh, girl, she said, tell Big Missus to kiss my monkey, A. And then she, like, um, when a bird's, like, when that bird, when the parrot, you know, makes a noise, she, like, hits it. Girl, why was the Missus literally in the doorway of the kitchen? And all, the, like, this, you know, servants, they all, like, oh, Lord Jesus, what are they gonna do? Girl, <laughs> what is gonna happen? So that night, they getting ready, you know. We go to bed. They're like, where Lucy at? Girl, Lucy has escaped, right? And the miss is like, well, I don't want her killed. Um, or I don't want the dogs to, like, you know, kill her. We want her to be, you know, back here because Grimm's the stupid overseer or the uh, slave, uh, what do you call it, catcher or whatever. He bought $400 worth, $400 worth of slaves and they either sick they can't do the work or they're like um simple minded but they catch her they brand her and they put like a r on her you know face so a couple days later this is another thing that's just so inhumane and i don't even know how to describe it they have like hangings like um they're a hanging two women i guess that uh i think that's the two women that killed or poisoned their um masters they have this like basically a, a watch party for you know hangings and so they have um food and they the masters make the slaves also come because they like we need you to watch this and they have to prepare food and everything like that like they go into a picture show and Viri like i noticed i ain't seen lucy all day and Grimm, i guess he noticed like where lucy at and they like we don't know they said she was sick you know she said she wasn't feeling good well who gave her that permission they like we don't know and so he tell one of the guys like go to the cabin and make sure she actually sick and she on the pallet, you know? So they go and they look and they look, okay, yeah, she on the pallet. No, she not. But the next morning they discovered that the head was a dummy. Lucy was gone. How long she had been gone, nobody knew. 
whether she had had two nights and a day to get a good head start with the northern road was neither here nor there. Grimms took a posse of men, bloodhounds, and went after her. But this time, they did not bring her back. She had gone too far, and they could not find a trace. Vyrie, like, has it on her mind, like, you know, about escaping. And she's already been thinking about that because of Randall. Which, girl, now we ain't learned that her and Randall, they've been getting it on. See how many nights they had laid under the stars and he had made love to her in the cornfield. Nor could she speak in knowing ways of how the hot young blood of passion that flowed between them. Girl. Um, but that got me. And the way that she wrote that, especially um, the anticipation of knowing oh lord what's gonna happen to her when they finally catch her it was kind of like oh god because we already know what's gonna be bad you know what i mean it, girl yeah but oh and then one thing that got me too um i said you know what we be thinking oh we be thinking lucy told no one of her plans but now that she had gone they remember her strange actions in those last days she had practiced covering the scar on her face with a mixture of yellow orchid red clay and charcoal until it had blended into her skin they thought she was merely trying to cover the ugly mark on her face she was trying to cover that scar so they when you know when she run away they would be like oh that's a runaway so they know you know it's branded on them on um her like i said we would we be thinking we be thinking and she's 18 years old and right now very is 16 so yeah that part got me when i was in the bathtub i was like oh my goodness okay guys so i'm so proud of myself because i got to page 194 um so i made a good amount like i made a little dent on this last night like i was saying and then i wanted to know how many pages i have left so i have 280 some pages for big books i tend to count like the pages left i have um it makes me feel a little bit better because you have like a four to five hundred page book and especially like 500 pages and when you only know you have 200 and some pages left it it's so weird. It makes it feel like, oh, a 200 and something page book. It, it's psychological, but I know for me, it makes me feel better. Um, so yeah, but I, this book is so good, y'all. The master, he, he dead now, okay? Cause he was not listening, okay? And when Vyrie told him, she said, you know, I'm, pregnant but she said I'm big I guess that was a way of saying that she's pregnant but she was like you know I'm pregnant and he was like oh is it one of my you know farm boys or one of mine and she like yeah, no and he like is it one of the um you know uh overseers she like no it's Randall and he like oh that free he realizes oh if I let if I allow her to marry him she'll be free and the children will be free so no and he don't want to lose her because of that cooking also it's a pride thing uh-uh you belong to me your kids belong to me da 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 but he says something like oh when i die you'll be free so his his leg he got in like an accident him and his son i think his son died and his leg got all toe up and they were like look you need you're gonna get uh gangrene so you need to you know um I was gonna say eliminate it lower <laughs> you need to amputate it no he don't want to do that so they're like all right just let it rock down and every time when they go in the room i mean you can't imagine a leg that is literally rotting it smells horrible i mean his wife don't even come down to see him and then of course because you know he's all messed up he gets into um drinking so he becomes like an alcoholic he tells viren virus you know bringing him his tray like oh you still here yeah and she looking like yeah bro like you know what i mean and um then he's like oh when i um you know i'm uh when i die you become free but i'm not dead yet and he's yelling i'm not dead yet girl think i forgot what i told you i promised to set you free when i die didn't i 
got it in my will right here and he patted the books and papers beside his bed but i ain't dead yet and he rose up from the couch as though he was going to strike her so she hurried back out of the room but as she fleed down the hall to the kitchen she could still hear him saying you ain't free till i die and i ain't dead yet that night he died First of all, that writing just kills me, okay? You saying all of that, and then she like, that night, he died. Love it. It's so weird because I'm not used to having um, books with, uh, what do you call it, table of contents. Have you guys noticed in like newer books now, they don't have a table of contents. It's really weird. In like older books, there's always a table of contents. I've noticed that in like newer books, there's no table of contents. Let me see something. Oh, girl. I'll put it back up. See, this is a newer book. This is a House of Eve. Yeah, this doesn't have a table of contents. Hmm. I've noticed that. I am, like, geeked over this book because it's just, like, everything that they're doing to, like, the Blacks. Um, oh, I sound like Trump. Lord. <laughs> you know, he calls us the Blacks. Everything that they're doing to, like, the enslaved people, it's like, you're thinking that you're getting at them. And clearly you are, but they're so clever that it's like they already have a step ahead of you you know what i mean um so like even with like the uh the missions of the house she literally doesn't want anyone any slaves to eat her food her preserves that she don't you know grow she'll uh preserve them anything she literally will put like some medicine down your throat to make you like vomit and she'll look to see the vomit and see if it has any like preserves like berries or because she likes preserves so any preservative she will literally see in your vomit if it's any of the color and i guess if you have that then it's like she'll beat you or whatever because that's that's stilly like she's that dirty you know what i mean and it's like girl little do you know they already steal it from you and you like underneath your nose and they do it cleverly like you know the way that uh Aunt Sally taught uh, Avari. She literally has like pockets in her dresses that you can hide food in. You know what I mean? And then even the way that they make the preserves, it's like they make sure that they got you know a little foot aside for them. And even with the food, so it's like, girl, you not you thinking you doing something? But they outsmarting you with the runaways and stuff like that. Some of them they get away. Like Lucy, Lucy got away. Okay, and. Lucy, the first time she didn't get away, but the second time she got away. And even you branded her, she was able to cover that up. So it's like, you know, gag on you, basically. But I just, I love the commentary in this book. Margaret Walker, like, fantastic. Now, y'all know how I was telling y'all that she sued Alex Haley because she said that he stole some of her ideas for Roots. Now, I have not read Roots. I have watched the miniseries, which I feel like, girl obviously the book is going to be different than the miniseries but i mean the similarities is like similarities that are that would be expected like obviously the misses and the whoopings and things like that but like even the stories i haven't there's nothing like one story that i can like think of the top of my head with roots is you know when um kunta gets his his leg you know chopped off that you know there's nothing like that going on um even with like yeah there's nothing right now i don't see any similarities only similarities are like you know the treatment of the slaves and that's like in all slave narratives and all you know historical fiction that focuses on um slave narrative so i'm like girl um i mean i got i'm still i'm still at the early stages but i'm I'm 190 some pages in this book and I ain't seen no similarities that are like you stole something from me. So yeah, I'll keep you guys up to date on that um, just to see if there's some more that's going to come up. But right now it's like, no ma'am. I need to get on Roots. I've read um, one of my favorite Alex Haley books is Queen. And I also like the TV series starring uh, Holly Berry. But I do have to say, I remember reading Queen and the beginning was so laborious. Oh, girl, it was so, I'm like, it almost made me want to DNF the book. But I'm like, no, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. And as soon as 
queen's mother easter came into the picture then it got totally better and it was not boring at all but that beginning was so boring because he was setting up which I realized what he was doing. He was setting up the story. He was setting up the people because there's so many generations. So he was really talking about Queen's grandfather. And yeah, he, that's what he was talking about. But it was just taking so long. And it was like, would you hurry up? Because you know, like her people, they're from um, Ireland. Girl. But I remember trying to read Roots, the physical copy. And I'm like, oh, no, this is boring. And I took to the audio and having an audio. And it was so boring. I still couldn't get into it. And then I, like, DNF'd it. And, like, two years later, I read Queen. And I was thinking, I said, you know what? I'm going to have to toughen it out. Because I had the same feeling for Queen. It was like, oh, my goodness. So I'm thinking once they... Because I don't even think I got to the part where they got to the Middle Passage. They were still in Africa. Like, they haven't even gotten captured yet. And it was just like, oh please so i'm thinking once they i get to the middle passage they get you know captured then it's gonna go um if you guys have read roots tell me uh because again i've never read it i was just watching many series billions of times um but yeah i need to get up on that and stick it out so because i feel like girl you're a black book collector you haven't read roots you know and i watching those series don't really count um so big missy just died from a stroke and when i tell you it sounds horrible but i was like oh thank god because she just was horrible and then graham the overseer um he ends up enlisting in uh the war because now like on the plantation at first it was like 40 something slaves and it went down to 20 something they basically they don't have nobody to work in the fields because either because either the slaves they run away <clears throat> or they die from like you know diseases and things like that now randall is getting on my nerves because it's like i need you to hurry up and come get your babies and your wife which i know he's trying but girl um and lillian which is technically um Viri's uh sister talking about oh I have nobody now because you know the daddy gone the mama gone the brother died and her husband died and she's like oh I don't have nobody here please stay with me oh, girl. so yeah I'm on page 269 I've made a good dent in this but I need this to kind of hurry up I need her to get off this plantation because she been on there for a while I need her to become free and go somewhere else so real quick i was going through my um j california cooper collection because next year um i'm going to be focusing on all of her works uh j california cooper she's known for short stories and plays they said i'm on wikipedia now they said she wrote 17 plays but i'm gonna focus on like her you know, short stories and novels. And I've only read, I don't think I've never read any of her novels and I've only read one short story collection, which is Homemade Love. But the reason why I wanted to like do this quickly is every time like when I go to a store and if I see her books there, I don't know if I have them or not. So I want to, um, I'm going to write them down and then I'm going to just transfer them into my, uh, phone because it looks like she has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I need three more. So I'm going to put these in order. So her first book came out in 1984 and it's a piece of mine. I've only read a couple of short stories out of these ones. Okay. And then Homemade Love is next. Some Soul to Keep. Okay, I have that. Family. A The Matter is Life don't think I have that. Yes, I do. Okay, the matter is 
live in search of satisfaction do, 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 do. Is, uh, have that some love some pain sometimes some love some pain sometimes okay then the wakes the wake of the wind the future has a past okay i don't have that next a age ain't nothing but a number of black women experiences okay i think that's a because she was a contributor i need to look that one up i don't think that's like her actual work and then some play some people some other place Okay, wild. That was a recent one. I came in 2006. Wild stars seeking midnight suns. Those are that's a short story. And then life is is short but wide. All right. So yeah, I need to get possibly. I think two because I think AJ not but a number black women explore midlife it says contributor so um I just think she was like I said featured in that so I don't think I'm gonna need to get that but I still want to look that up oh girl my hair look a mess but I'm about to wash it but I wanted to tell y'all finish this this is five stars this is five stars first of all this book was 497 pages. It did not read like 497 pages. It was paced perfectly. It wasn't like, oh, can, I, can you kind of hurry up? No. I think the last clip I was saying, um, you know, I wanted her to hurry up and get out of, out of that plantation, which clearly she did. Um, because this is in three sections and like the last section is Reconstruction Age and it stops at this book is a span from 1835 to 1870 and slavery is already over. Slavery was over in 1865. Um, well, supposed to be, but, um, you know, it, um, also you got closure. It just, oh my goodness. So Randall, obviously that was like her first love. That was her children's father. And then, you know, he, told her he sent you know word for her to wait for him but she literally couldn't because after the um after the war you know obviously she became free but the yankees came and they like destroyed um what is it the the big house like well it wasn't nowhere for Viry to go and the good thing is she met um a man he actually came to the plantation after you know the war um Ennis and he really helped her he helped her raise her children and you know, they married I do think that she grew to love him but I think she was always in love with Randall but Random real but Randall realized you know what I haven't seen this woman or my kids in seven something years They've already established themselves. I can't just insert myself and be like, okay, you need to choose. You know what I mean? So I had mad respect for uh, Randall. I really like Viri as a character. Um, I liked her a lot. That woman was resilient. She was really guarded. But the reason why, I mean, you're a slave and you have endured all of that. Um, of course, you are going to have a little bit of, you know, pushback or whatever. But there was a scene um where because she was guarded very didn't let people know how she truly truly felt you know what i mean she kind of she kept a lot of things bottled up especially about um some things that happened to her and this scene oh my goodness it got me it said so in this scene she's talking to randall and um and it's so and look she's talking to her baby daddy and her uh husband but she says for him Big Missy was mighty mean to me from the first day I went in the big house as a slave to work. She emptied Mrs. Lillian's peapot in my face. She hung me up by my thumbs. She slapped me and she kicked me. 
She cursed me and she worked me like I was a dog. They stripped me naked and put me on the auction block for sale. And worst of all, they kept me ignorant so I can't read and write my name. But I closed her eyes, but I closed her eyes in death. And God is my witness. I bear no ill will. Old master was my own daddy and he had never did own me for his child. I begged him to let me marry you and go free and he said no. He ain't punished nobody when he stand to see them beat me. She stopped and looked at them frightened, almost panicked. They caught her words and suddenly they both standing over her. What did you say? asked Ennis. Who stood to beat you? asked Randall. And both of them together said, when? Navir was crying and she realized she had gone too far not to go on. She was fumbling at her waist and her apron at the buttons fastening her clothing. Suddenly she snatched at her clothes. She tore them loose and bared her back. That's what they'd done to me that morning when I was trying to meet you at the creek. Hysterical now, she had thrown off pieces after pieces of her clothing. And now in the moonlight, the two men stood horrified before the sight of her terrible scarred back. Oh, Lord, that scene got me. I was, oh, my goodness. The way that Margaret, well, the way that Margaret wrote that, you could literally see them and can see how horrified they were. That she could have been so angry and mean and bitter towards, you know, uh, Master John and Big Missus. And she was like, no, I don't have any ill, you know, feelings towards them. And like she said, you know, that lady treated me horribly. But when she died, I closed her eyes. You know what I mean? I took care of her, her daughter. Um, yeah, I'm just so fascinated with this story. And the fact that Margaret Walker, she, it took 30 years to um, write this book. And I mean, kudos to her. And I also think the reason why this book is written so well she actually is a poet she was known for her poetry um this is her only full-length novel that she did i was telling you guys how she had sued alex haley because she said he kind of took some of her um i guess stories or whatever from roots um i mean i honestly didn't see anything like i was saying earlier only similarities is like the normal similarities when it comes to enslavement but granted i have not read root so i don't think i'm equipped to give a full assessment you know what i mean because i've only seen a mini series and of course that mini series is not going to you know have everything that the book had um so that's why i feel like i can't really give a full like you know what i mean evaluation because like girl you ain't even read the book after reading this i am curious to read roots and like i told y'all before girl i'm gonna just have to bear with it because the beginning was so boring but i can get through it okay i mean i can go on and on and on about this story about this woman about this book if you guys have not read jubilee i would highly encourage you to read it and i tabbed and highlight and i was craving a book where i could tab and highlight and write in it and this was the book <laughs> that succeeded clearly y'all saw i had such a ball reading this and my commentary was just <laughs> it was heavy because this is a book where you have to talk about it okay like it's it's a book that you have to talk about um also too for slave narrative it's not that harsh you know how slavery obviously we already know it's unjust it's brutality you did have some scenes that were you know difficult but it wasn't like oh my goodness unbearable it was not like that. I honestly can say it wasn't like that. Um, but you still got the gist of enslavement and the harsh reality of it. So, yeah, guys, that's all I have for you. And I'll be back with more Black Books. Bye.